So Dave and I are up camping this weekend again, two weekends in a row, and we actually came back to the same place. But Dave's trying a new tent out, and here it is. He's got his directions. We always go out, and he sets it up for the first time whenever he goes camping with me. And this one has pictures, so that's a good sign. That'll help me. <laughs> but he's really going in style. He's got a great big... Uh, what is it 10 by 10 10 by 10 so Six he's tall, he's gonna have a lot of room that's right and uh so i got my hammock I just got it up and uh supposed to get down to 46 tonight so i brought my econ 10 degree under quilt that's probably overkill but uh, uh it'll be nice and warm supposed to get some winds up to about 15 25 miles an hour tonight and maybe tomorrow too so it was supposed to be clear and really kind of cool and now it's some chances of rain after midnight but basically 20 percent so hopefully the 20 percent won't hit us but it's just enough i got to put my tarp up so got to get busy to do that talk to you later It is Sunday evening, and Dave and I are here by the fire. I don't know if you can. There's Dave. There's the fire, and uh, we've had some supper, had some coffee. Probably I'll have some marshmallows or something later. We'll see. We've got Dave's tent set up, and we got my tarp over there. We're just commenting on how good they look. We're getting the hang of it. Dave did a pretty good job. That's the first time he set the tent up. He was got it out of the box today. So that's a nice job. And uh, so we're just enjoying the weather. It's about 65 degrees already. And it's only, what, 8.30? 8 o'clock, 8.30, something like that. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a nice cool night. The weather report for Marengo says it might be down as low as 45 tonight. That. Yeah, so oh so it's going to be, it's definitely going to be a cool night. I brought my uh, hammock gear incubator, econ incubator, uh, the 10 degree, so I know I'll be plenty warm and I've got my pariah uh, over quilt, which is a 15 degree, so I should <laughs> not have any problem at all. Uh, but uh, it's kind of nice to be able to still have some cool weather here in June, and uh, so we're enjoying that. Uh, we may stay, or Dave's going to stay for sure for two nights, um, and I'm planning on staying for two nights. We'll see. My daughter's been sick and in the hospital a little bit, and uh, so we're just kind of playing that by ear, but uh, we're at least here, and I'm only about 45 minutes away from home, so if needs be, I can leave pretty quickly. So, so we're just enjoying the evening. Maybe take some more video of the campfire a little bit later, and uh, might even get my harmonica out and play it tonight once I get in in bed so uh, we'll see how that goes well, good evening <clears throat> just uh, getting ready to hit the sack tonight got a nice hang here in my bare butt hammock and uh, using my incubator under quilt it's uh, already in the 50s and it's supposed to get down to 46 tonight so I'm glad I brought my uh, econ incubator even though it's a little overkill I won't have to worry about being cold in the morning so uh, beautiful night tonight just clear stars are out we weren't sure and there's still a chance a 20% chance of rain although I don't think it's going to happen now but anyways, uh, we're going to, I put my fly up tonight, so uh, I don't have to worry if it rains or not. Nothing will hit me in here. So, so uh don't know exactly what I'm going to do tomorrow. Planning on staying another day and another night. Uh, kind of depends on my daughter, how she's feeling, but I 
imagine she's going to go see the doctor, and so I won't know until probably midday or maybe even later what the plan is. I know she's supposed to get an echo on her heart on Tuesday, uh, I think late morning or early afternoon. So I will, you know, be going home Tuesday. I'm only 35 minutes north of the hospital where she would normally go, so if for some reason she has to go in for an emergency, I'm actually probably going to be able to get to her faster from here than I am uh, from my own home. So uh, so my wife was nice enough to let me out, and uh, she says, you only get this kind of nice weather just a few days in the summer, so why don't you go enjoy it? So I really appreciate her for doing that. So I'm going to try to get some sleep tonight as best I can. Sometimes I can, sometimes I can't. I'm hoping tonight's one of those I can. So, talk to you in the morning. So, uh, one of the things I thought I'd show you on this trip is some of my electronics that I run along my ridge line here. Uh, this is a light that my daughter got me for Christmas. And you can see it has a setting... And then you can, there's a little button here, and you can just keep pushing that. And there's different settings. You can have a dimmer one. You can have a flasher one. And then you can have a different uh, kind that's a little easier to read with. And then it shuts off. So that's really nice uh, to have at night. I, uh, I'll try to video a little bit of that tonight. And after dark so you can see how much lighter it makes it so that's one thing that I have and I, you can just run that along a ridge line any place it's got a nice little uh, hook there to do that the second thing I've showed you before that we I have these little clamps that I got at uh, Home Depot I think they're about 99 cents and you just push on them and and then they can actually come off like this uh, and what I do is I just hook that in. Now, one of the things I always have is a headlamp. And so uh, I usually wear that right to bed. And uh, once I get all in and I'm all settled in, then I take that off my head and I put it on there. And again, I just kind of slide it down here a little ways. And, you know, it just sits there. I don't usually hit it or bump it or anything like that. And it's a nice place to have it. And then if I need a light at night to see something I can just turn this on and then again I can you know shine it up on things and and see a little bit uh, this one is uh, I, I use these headlamps I get them usually at Walmart or a place like that I can usually get a couple of them for about 15 bucks this one has four settings again it has a bright a light then it has a brighter one then it has a real bright one, and then it also has a flasher. A flasher is really good for an emergency. If something happens, you're out in the backwoods and you trip and you fall and you get hurt or something, it just helps uh, rescue or see uh, a little bit better. So it's nice to have that. And, that. and also, it's my understanding the battery lasts longer with a flash and just a straight light. A third thing that I have, and I just got this from... John Romello down at Trailheads. Um, <laughs> don't know if I can get it all in here very easily, but I have have this little uh, organizer, and it has uh, three pockets. It has uh, this pocket here on the side, and this pocket on the other side. They're about the same size, and they're, they're just about right for my phone. And then the middle one's a little bigger. You can put, like, gloves in or whatever. Now, what I have is I have this uh, uh, this little charger in here. And the charger I have, I think you can... Oops, got it upside down, sorry. So this is the one I use a lot. It's an X2 power. It has 10,400 milliamps, so it's a, it has a lot of charge to it. But it's not very heavy. And so I like to take this one when I'm backpacking. Notice I can charge two things at once. And uh, it actually has a little switch to start things. So when I push it, then it actually has this. And if I, put, if I plug this into my phone or something, 
and then I push that, then it starts to charge, and then I can turn it off as well. And there's four lights on it, so when it's fully charged, there's four lights, and uh, uh, so it, it'll actually show when it's charging and how much charge it's got. So this is really nice. I have another one that's, I think, double this, but it's heavier. And so I don't usually, I, I take it with me sometimes, but not all the time. Uh, but this will, this will, like I said, charge something, charge my phone twice from almost nothing to full charge. And so it's very worthwhile. And again, I, I like this little organizer because I can just stick it right in there. And I can have my phone right next to it and, and charge it up and it works great. And then you can have other stuff. I've got my... <laughs> Sorry. i getting dizzy here watching this. It's hard to do this with just one hand. But I brought my harmonica this weekend. And so uh, I have a honer. That's kind of like the, the standard version. And uh, so I, I enjoy taking that with me and playing some tunes. I'm not very good, but... You don't have to be real good when you're playing a harmonica. You can play a lot of the old songs, you know, Amazing Grace and things like that. So, yeah, so that's that's my little uh, uh, quick run at my electronics that I have usually in here. Sometimes I have some other things as well, but that's usually the, the stuff that I take care of and have. I... Uh, have my Sea to Summit pillow back here. I really like that. It's an inflatable, and the thing I like about it is in my hammock is I can inflate it or deflate it, so I can have different kinds of stuff, and I've got it pretty much deflated here, so it just kind of runs around my neck, and then kind of it's a little fuller on each side, but it, it actually acts like almost like earmuffs, especially on this side, and you can see that was where the air is, so uh, uh, you know, where the where the uh, air comes in underneath my uh, tarp so that that's kind of nice too so I have to say this last uh, <laughs> last night was kind of a long night for me uh, I did sleep several times which is sometimes a problem with me but uh, man I had to keep going to the bathroom and about halfway through the night I had a sugar low I must have taken just a little bit too much uh, Levamir last night, and uh, I don't know about two thirty or three. I started just sweating. I woke up. I was just soaking wet with sweat. And when that happens, especially if you're outside and it's cold, <laughs> it was like in the fifties. I'm thinking, oh crap! I must, uh, you know, my sugar must be low. And I didn't have my stuff here with me. I couldn't check it. I had to get out and get up, go and get in the car. But I could tell uh, even before I got to the car that my sugar was low. So then I had to, uh, I, I always keep, when you're diabetic, you really need to worry about that stuff. I always keep a, a tab, set of tab, glucose tabs. So I downed four of those and got my sugar back up to where it was or where it needed to be. And so I was fine the rest of the night. But um, that's something you have to worry about when you're diabetic. There's several things. Uh, I have my medicine here. Uh, you have to make sure you don't get it too hot. And, uh, you know, the weather is like in the 70s during the day and the 50s at night. So, uh, you know, it's not a problem. But if you go when it's a lot hotter, you have to kind of worry about that. Because it gets too hot, it messes it up. And if it's too cold and it freezes, it'll mess your, uh, you know, uh, your insulin or your uh, you know, hemolog or whatever you happen to have. Uh, if that freezes, it's, it messes up so it's not any good either. So uh, you have to make sure you take precautions like that in the winter i usually keep my uh, pins right on my in my pocket or something on my body so it stays and it keeps from freezing and in the summer if it gets really really hot sometimes what i'll do is i'll bring a sock or something and i'll get that wet and just the evaporation from that sock will keep it cool enough uh that it doesn't you know it doesn't get way you know hot so so uh those are a couple things that uh Maybe you haven't thought about if you're an older person, you're a retired person, and you've got diabetes, you shouldn't let that mess you up and not be able to go out. But you do have to think about it and, you know, kind of plan ahead a little bit. Another thing that uh, you kind of have to worry about when you get older, 
Uh, those of you that are older know that, that it, gets, it gets harder to get uh, up off the ground and getting in and out of a hammock. Sometimes you end up just kind of rolling out and getting on the ground and then getting up. And that's really hard it, uh, if, you, if you have struggles getting up, especially older people. Uh, so uh, the, one of the things that Dave and I do is we always have a, some kind of chair. We have a little chair that we carry uh, when we go backpacking. But when we're car camping like today, we have bigger chairs. And we just put that outside of our uh, thing. And, and actually, uh, my shoes, I think, are right at the, at the bottom of that too. And so I can just kind of get up. This, this helps me get up. And uh, I can sit right there in that chair real quick and put my shoes on and, and uh, it makes it a lot easier. Uh, used to be I you know, could just roll out on the ground and just pop up, but uh, boy, the old legs and the <laughs> body doesn't work quite as well anymore. And if I get down on the ground, it's hard for me to get up. Uh, you know, and so uh, I can get up, but it, it, it's a lot harder. You got that chair, it's great. Plus, you can set stuff down on the chair. Uh, that's my buff out there. You can set that on the chair, a hat on a chair, and then, you know, get into your hammock and then grab that stuff and bring it in. Or same way with my electronics. So it makes it kind of nice for that, too. And I could cook on it, too, I suppose. But uh, I usually, if I'm going to cook something, I either do it in a car camping thing. I'll just get up and use the picnic table. And if I'm camping, uh, I'll put it on the ground. So if I'm, if I'm backpacking, I'll put it on the ground. So last week we were uh, showing you how to set up the tarp. In fact, it was actually between these same two trees, uh, how to set up our hammy. And uh, this week, uh, because it's possibly going to have some sprinkles or showers, we uh, put our tarp up. I have a sanctuary silt tarp. It's a 10 by 12, which gives me a lot of room so I can put a chair under here. And if it's raining, I can have a chair under here and sit and cook and do all that kind of stuff. And uh, so what I thought I'd do today is just share a little bit about how to uh, stake out a tarp. If you look here, I have some lines that are tied to the pullouts on this corner. And then if I go to the far corner, I have the same thing. And these are reflective, so they reflect at night, so they're easy to see. And then I have some other ones here, too. I could have three on this side all together. Uh, I've only got two hooked up right now. But I didn't stake them out the whole time because we didn't have a bunch of wind or anything here. Um, it was basically maybe 10 to 15 mile an hour breezes. So I wasn't worried about the tarp catching a bunch of wind and, and then pulling these stakes out. But one thing you want to do is you want to get your tarp... Uh, you want to get it staked nice and tight so that rain flows off of it pretty easy. And there's a couple things. This tarp, first of all, has a pullout right here. And we have some line. And I have a Dutchware. Uh, I don't know if you can see this very good. It's not a wasp. I forget which one this one's called. But I have a piece of Dutchware there. And it, it uh, seals up really easy. Maybe I'll make a video of this someday, but if you just go to Dutchware, they have a video to show you how it hooks up. I have one down at the far end, and I can just move this a couple little things and pull it, and uh, it'll come down. But it won't, it won't untighten. So I have that set up. And then you tighten up these things as well. Now these are called micro line adjusters or guy line adjusters. And I really like these. If you'll take a look here. There's a, you tie a knot right there, and then you make a loop. And notice my loop goes all the way down. Now, I actually tied the loop a little shorter just because I didn't have a lot of room for staking. But you take this loop and you go around the stake down there and come back up here. And so you've got this loop. Now, if you look right here, this side is where the line kind of goes in. And notice I can pull this line out with my hand and then I can adjust it and I gotta pull it out far enough there we go and then I can just slide this down or I can make this loop bigger or smaller just by doing that now I'm gonna pull it back up tight and you just pull it up tight and then you just 
make that piece go down underneath these little teeth here and it's nice and tight and you can tighten it up even a little bit more but what you do is usually you have to do it with two hands but that's how simple it is and so you can really tighten this thing down now sil poly is what this tarp is made out of i'm actually getting a new one from trailheads pretty soon and uh, that's also sil poly and sil poly uh, what will happen is when you pull it at first it, it will tighten up, but then it stretches a little bit. So like uh, usually when I set this up, I'll come back around about five hours later and I'll tighten each one of these a little bit more. And usually it'll hold tight for the whole night. And then the next day I usually will tighten up a little bit more again. And uh, But notice the tarp has really good stitching on it and uh, lots of stitching in the corner so you're not going to get a bunch of rips. And it has one on the top, so if you want to do one clear up at the top, you could possibly pull it up. Um, so, so, but that's something that probably uh, you won't see on every uh, beginning <laughs> hammocking or tarp uh, hanging thing is how to use these things. Now the directions, I get these from Pariah, or Paria, I'm not sure how you really pronounce that, but that's where I got it. That's where I got the sill tarp. I think the sill tarp is only like 70 or $80 for this 10 by 12, which is a really nice deal. You can get some smaller ones and some hex cuts, things like that if you're worried about weight. But I'm not usually worried too much about weight. And they come with these. And I forget how many they come with. Plus you can get a set of these, a set of 10 of these um, uh, to use for other things as well. And so I really, really like them. Uh, again, they're called uh, micro uh, guy line extenders or guy line uh, tighteners. And uh, I think you'll find them very, very helpful. Uh, they have this, uh, this really nice line. Uh, and again, it's very reflective at night, so you're not tripping over. Okay, the other item I just want to mention real quickly is taking care of bugs. Uh, bugs can be a real hassle. Uh, I actually don't like to camp that much in the summertime because of ticks and, and mosquitoes and things like that. But I found some things that really do help take care of them so that, you know, if it gets really hot and muggy, I don't care what you use the... Uh, you know bugs just show up but uh, this one is called a thermo cell um, there we go it's called the thermo cell and it's a mosquito repellent it screws onto the top of a canister now this canister was almost empty from cooking and so I just save those and then I use them for this thermo cell and th if you look on the top there's a little blue pad that fits in there you can see some of it's turned white now but uh, the blue means that there's the chemical in it that repels bugs now this thermo cell when I set it on the table here will make a dome approximately about 15 feet around this table and mosquitoes just won't come in here I don't know exactly how it works but I just know that it, uh, I've used it a lot uh, Dave and I have camps where it's been really buggy before and we had very very good luck with it it's kind of bu been buggy here yesterday and and we were having some problems and then i turned mine on last night and uh, it, it it really cut down almost completely on on the mosquitoes now the way it works is you turn this uh, little thing there's a switch that turns on and what that does is turns the gas on inside but just at a really low rate and then there's a little uh handle right here and you just <laughs> I don't know if I could do it with one hand here there we go you just kind of snap it up a couple times and then you look in here and I think you can see it in there you can see the flames actually burning in there it's just a real small flame it gets hot enough that this thing here will eventually get hot enough you might you know burn your hand if if you but it's not that hot and it cools very quickly when you're done and like I said, this makes a dome about 15 feet around me, and basically it keeps the mosquitoes away. Now, I typically don't use them at night when I sleep. Instead, I have a mosquito uh, net for around my tarp there, and I kind of depend on that. Um, I usually use Picardin, uh, some kind of spray with Picardin in it. Uh, I couldn't find it before I came up, so I had to use Deep Woods Off and... Uh, it's okay, but it doesn't do as near as good a job as Picardin. Picardin always works really good for me. 
And then if I want to keep it off my clothes, I don't have any with me, but uh, uh, if you go to Walmart or a place like that, or any of the camping stores, um, you get this stuff called permethrin. And it's a spray, and you spray it on your clothes like I would spray my socks, and I would spray my shoes, I would spray my uh, shorts here, my shirt. I would just spray all of that stuff, and that would, uh, uh, it, it, it keeps like all the ticks away. I've gone a lot of times when there's been lots of ticks and stuff, and I just spray those on my clothes, and yet they say to spray it about 24 hours before you actually use it. And so I spray it on my clothes, my shorts, my long pants, you know, whatever. I don't spray it on my tent or my tarp or things like that. I just kind of uh, think, okay, I, I don't know exactly. It's, it's, it is it's is kind of an insecticide. I'm not sure it's great to be sleeping in something that has that stuff. And it really, I just want to keep it off of me when I'm walking so I don't get ticks. And the stuff actually, the permethrin actually kills ticks. If they jump on you and they get some on you, it just kills them. And so that's why I really like it. It really gets rid of them. I have used that for three and a half, four years, and I have not gotten a tick on me when I've been out in the woods. And so uh, uh, I think, I, you know, I'm sold on this stuff. And it'll last about three or four uh, washings too. So like I can spray it on a shirt and I have a few that I just, I use those when I'm gonna be going someplace. And like this shirt right here, I would spray this one and and then I'll wash it and I'll and I won't have to spray it again. I can use it three or four times uh, before I really need to spray it again. So, well, over here we see the sun, but right now we're getting some sprinkles on us here. So I guess I better go move my chair and get underneath my tarp if I'm going to do any more video. We're just getting finished up here. Dave's got still taking down his tent a little bit. My stuff's all down and in the car. May make a donut run before we head home. But uh, been a nice uh, two days here. We had some really beautiful weather for in June. It was again. It was down to 50s last night, so that was nice. A little warmer than the night before, but so yeah, been a good week. Remember, we always say, if uh, we can do this, you can do this too. Especially when you go car camping. Uh, anybody can do this. And I hope uh, some of you, even if you're not <clears throat> able to get out on the trail, uh, you know, pack some stuff in the back of your car, find a good state park and uh, or another campsite, and come uh, enjoy the outdoors. So. See you on the trail.